Um, there is complicated regulations and tax structure uh, well beyond the amount of incentives we offer or the amount of revenues that we take in or the size and scale that we are. And there are some incredibly burdensome costs. Uh, I will highlight healthcare, uh, which is continuing to escalate at a very aggressive rate, and that's stifling growth, particularly for smaller businesses or, or early stage businesses. And you know the numbers speak for themselves. Uh, we are in the bottom ten in a variety of different categories uh, by independent analysis. And the one that's been highlighted most recently, uh, as you may uh, recall, uh, the Lieutenant Governor highlighted that we are 49th out of 50th as a uh, place to do business under the Forbes statute. But, um, uh, but I'm even under CNBC, uh, which I think is a much better set of indices, we dropped seven places uh, to be 37. And so we are, we are clearly uh, not stacking up. And unlike some of my primary opponents, I think we do need to talk about this. Because the challenges we face are real. And if we want to move our economy forward, we have to confront them. And we need to be clear about what we're going to do to solve those problems. If you dive a little bit uh, more deeply into the CNBC uh, analysis, you see a couple things that I want to highlight. Uh, one is how, how low we are in some fundamental areas like transportation infrastructure, uh, technology and innovation, uh, which includes broadband. Uh, as well as access to capital. Uh, those of you who are in business know capital is king, uh, that you need to have access to capital to be able to get from that early stage to the larger stage, uh, and we have fallen yet another four positions in access to capital. Uh, but the good news, uh, it fits into two categories. One is that in things that are really tough to create, if you don't have them to begin with, we're doing really well. We're in the top five in quality of life, and we are in the top five in terms of education. We actually have a very good K-12 education system, and our education assets are actually quite strong. And those are difficult to invent out of whole cloth if you're trying to turn those around. The other is that these three areas uh, that I mentioned, infrastructure, uh, technology, and access to capital, are things that we can actually do something about in the state of Vermont. And the state government can actually have an impact on turning those particular pieces around. But this is the slide that has me the most concerned. Uh, this is a slide uh, showing a graph of, of new business startups uh, in the state of Vermont. And you will see the dotted line is 2003, uh, which happens to be uh, when the Douglas Duty administration uh, came into office. Now, I can't claim that all of this is because of their fault, but I will say that we are on a trajectory that is really scary. This is a state that has been based on small business, small businesses, some of which turn into larger businesses. And, they, and, and to see that that bedrock of our economy is quickly going down means that we don't have the farm team to come in as businesses are acquired and the natural change occurs in the economy. We have been losing ground, and to be able to turn this around is going to need some fast action so that we can have that diversity of, of businesses that are starting that can be the next generations of IDXs and Ben and & Jerry's and the like. Um, I will also note that if you graph the, uh, the average for the rest of the country, that it's actually relatively flat even through this recession time. So it's not just that we're following national trends. As a state that's been about innovation and small business, we are losing ground, and we're losing ground quite dramatically. Uh, but the other, the other good news is that we have some real opportunities. And I listed a bunch of them up here, uh, some of which we've already talked about, whether it's our colleges and universities, both within our state, but also near our state. Uh, Logic Associates, which was a good Vermont company, was started by a Tuck grad and a Thayer School grad. Uh, a lot of the businesses that have grown up down in the Bennington area were actually tech transfer companies coming over from RPI. Uh, we have superb institutions in Vermont that have the real potential to do that kind of innovation drive. We should also be looking at those that are near our state and figure out how to leverage them to create jobs in our state. Uh, we have a great quality of life. I talked about public schools. Uh, we actually have a lot of the basic infrastructure for rail and air and fiber optics, and rail and fiber optics actually go together. 
because they drop fiber optic pipes along rail lines and right of ways. Uh, we have great uh, sense of community and authentic communities. I think it was Frank Bryant who said it was as if we were on a race with other states on a round track. We got so far behind, we ended up ahead. Uh, and I think to a certain extent, that is true because we have those authentic places that, are, that people want to live in as long as we have the overlay of the infrastructure to be able to make good use of them. But the final piece is the last one, which I want to highlight, which is that we have the highest bond rating uh, in the country, which means we have inexpensive dollars that we can actually use to build the infrastructure components where we are right now so far behind. So this brings me to where uh, the vision is for a new economy for the state of Vermont. And it fits into four new emerging kinds of economies uh, that are growing, which can all work in Vermont. Some states are targeting one or the other, but I believe they can all come together. The first is the churn economy. And the churn economy is the economy where you actually expect companies to start, to grow, and to have an exit strategy. Sometimes the exit strategy is to sell, right? Like IDX did to GE, or Logic Associates did to Constellation Software. Some is to become an ESOP, and to sell to the employees like Harris Reels, and, uh, and uh, King Arthur Flower, and some of the others. But it's all about understanding that that is a natural progression. That companies are not going to all be like National Life of Vermont and stick around for centuries. And if we're intentional about that, the goal is to make sure that we take the, the resources that come out of that sale, uh, both human and financial, and have the opportunity to pour them right back into setting up the next generation of companies. Now, you need certain kinds of components to be able to support those kinds of startups, and you need to make sure that you are doing, uh, you have a, a certain environment to allow us to take advantage of those uh, those companies as they sell, so the resources go right back in and be growing. Um, and there's some dislocation. So when people uh, lose their job, when it goes from one to another, we need to make sure that they are covered on things like healthcare, so that they can go to start off those next set of companies, and that dislocation has as minimal impact as possible on their families. But this is, this is uh, a critical part of the churn economy. The second is the creative economy, which is very much in uh, line with what we're seeing in our downtowns right now, uh, which is about creating the atmosphere where people who are innovative want to live. Uh, the third is the place-based economy. And this is the economy that's around things that we have that no other place in the world has. No other place has Mount Mansfield or Camel's Hump. No other place has Lake Champlain. And these are incredible assets, uh, and we can leverage those to have year-round tourism that is connected to them and have that be an important part of our economy. And then finally, the slow money economy. And this is something that's been highlighted recently by people like Bill McKibben and others, which is about the types of of jobs and businesses that have a long-term view and also address the kinds of things that take longer to produce but provide a higher yield, whether it's organic food, whether it's uh, the kind of craftsmanship that actually will get a premium uh, in wood products, uh, or it's in addressing things that will have a long-term benefit or is capturing some of the long-term uh, implications of the environmental changes that are happening, like climate change and peak oil. Uh, and this is, this is a, a, a critical piece that we already have uh, some expertise and some segments in, but it's one that we can actually embrace and support because it does make money. And in many cases, it makes a lot more money than if we're trying to compete in the commodity space. So all of these can come together in Vermont, but more importantly, they can all feed off of one another. That, in fact, people who are in the churn economy are people who want to live in authentic communities with other creative people. Whether 